So this is the uh, LFO module. Um, the uh, this one's based on a uh, David Halliant uh, circuit that I got off the net. Um, the, the link in the uh, the website. Um, fairly simple kind of affair really. Um, you have a, a control over the rate of the of the oscillator, the depth, which is how far it swings uh, across the zero crossing, um, and then this actually this particular one actually has the ability to uh, switch between either a square or a pulse uh, waveform and a triangle waveform. Um, with the square waveform you get a very pronounced off and on kind of oscillation whereas the triangle waveform you get a nice almost sort of sinusoidal uh, kind of waveform which sounds a bit better for, for an, a, an LFO if I'm honest. Um, single output which is basically just a, a, a control voltage output of 0 to 10 volts and um, we typically use that just to modulate filters and so forth. So uh, this is another Eurorack style module. Uh, it's 4 HP across, nice small one, and not massively complicated on the back really. Um, it's driven by a, a single TL74 uh, op amp, so quad op amp. And um, that's kind of performing a couple of functions really. It's controlling the uh, the output LED, which uh, fades from green to red, depending whether it's uh, going uh, positive across the zero crossing or whether it's going negative below it. Um, it's also acting as an output buffer uh, as well, so, so that the, uh, the signal's nice and strong. Um, and it's also working as part of the wave shaping um, uh, component, so basically turning a, uh, an off-on kind of square wave into a more uh, rounded sort of uh, triangle wave. Um, that's broadly it really, it's a, uh, you know, a plus minus 12 volt circuit, um, uh, again that's largely driven based upon what the, what the op amp is, is requiring, no, no logic on this particular one, uh, does pretty much what it says in the tin really, um, it's hard to get particularly excitable about this, this one, <laughs> so uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll put that into the rack in a moment and um, just show how that uh, behaves itself with all the other components. So onto a range of our more kind of mundane uh, sort of utility um, modules uh, for the moment. So we'll talk about the mixer and then we'll talk about the multiplier as well or the, the multiplexer. Um, this is effectively operating as any other mixer would operate. So you have a number of inputs. In this case, we've got three and they are summed together and sent to a, a single output. Uh, the inputs are controllable by a volume potentiometer there so we can control how much you know, the, the mix is for each particular one and uh, around the business end uh, it is very very simple it's essentially a, a single uh, TL72 op amp which is doing the work um, and uh, yeah it, it doesn't really get more, much more complicated than that to be honest with you uh, I put it in a uh, an 8 HP rack um, unit for the moment because uh, it's quite wide in terms of the controls and stuff, but the circuit on the back certainly doesn't doesn't require it. Um, quite easy to extend this as well. I mean, it's it's quite a nice easy circuit if you wanted to to put in additional channels um, that you just wire them in with a uh, uh, 100k resistor there and uh, and run the whole thing in series. So yeah, that's uh, that's about it really for the mixer. Not particularly exciting, um, but uh, we'll show it in the uh, once it's got its place in the rack as to kind of what it's really used for. Um, this kind of does the reverse of what a mixer does. So a mixer combines multiple input signals and sends that to a single output signal. Uh, what this is doing is it's taking a single input signal and sending it to two output signals. So there's actually two channels within this particular unit itself. So this allows me to have two individual uh, independent uh, inputs and then for each independent input I can then send those to two individual outputs. Um, and this is really quite useful when you start to kind of chain lots and lots of uh, modules together. Um, particularly use this one for the uh, for any kind of gate and envelope control. So typically the output of the, of the, of the envelope goes into here and then we can send the, 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 the envelope output to the voltage control filter as well as the voltage control amplifier. Um, and it just basically saves us having to, to build two uh, envelope generators. Also, if we wanted to trigger things um, off multiple gates, then we could basically send the gate input 
into there and then send the outputs across that. Um, these are chainable as well, so if you wanted to to kind of get three outputs, then you could take the uh, single input there, output there, put that on into there, and then you get your other two outputs. Um, and again, these are reasonably sort of straightforward to build. Um, this one's based upon a TL74 op amp. Um, all it's really doing is it's just taking the inputs uh, and buffering them uh, so that the uh, image, uh, sorry, the, the audio input or the signal input is not degraded as it's basically shared across two outputs. Um, you, you could build this via a passive without the op amp, but there's a, uh, a danger that, you know, the more outputs you have, the, the, the sort of the, the more you're spreading the output signal and therefore that might be a, a little bit, a little bit weaker. Yeah, so that's it really. Um, I'll, I'll say, as with all the rest, we'll, we'll plug this into the into the rack to sort of show what it does and it doesn't really do anything particularly exciting on its own. Um, it's only when it's used with, with other modules that it, it really starts to add a bit of value. So we've got everything stuck in the rack again um, and this is probably looking a little bit like Spaghetti Junction because there's a whole bunch of cables going on. Uh, it's probably easier to actually demonstrate um, both the, or all three rather, the, the LFO, the multiplexer and the mixer all together and just to kind of give you a bit of a feeling as to what's going on so what we're going to do here is we're going to use the step sequencer and the quantizer to effectively drive a sequence of notes eight notes uh, and therefore the uh, the step sequencer is effectively sending a gate output and a, and a note output. So in this case, this is the note output going through the quantizer, going into the um, the note CV of the VC of the VCO. So that effectively changes the pitch. And then we're using the uh, sawtooth wave as the output. Um, that's going into the filter, and then from the filter, it's then going coming out the filter, going into the VCA. So that's uh, you know standard sort of filter VCA kind of combination there. Um, in terms of the multiplexers and so forth, um, where it gets interesting is we're going to take, I haven't plugged it in yet, but we're going to take the gate output, which will fire once for each of these steps. That's going into the uh, gate input on the envelope generator, which will basically make the envelope generator kick into effect every time the step goes through a note. Uh, but what, what, what we're doing this time that's uh, slightly different is we're taking the envelope output and we're passing it into the buffered multiple and the reason we're doing that is we actually want to use a single envelope to control two things we're using uh, an output of that envelope to go into the VCA which controls the uh, the sort of the, the volume of the output and <clears throat> we're also sending the output into a mixer as well so this is where it gets a little bit more complicated so for the, for the filter, what we want to do is to actually combine um, both the envelope uh, output and the LFO output into a single control voltage. So effectively, we're, we're modulating the frequency, uh, the, the VCF cutoff frequency via uh, a combination of the LFO and the envelope. Sounds horribly more complicated than it really is, but in essence, what we're doing is <clears throat> we'll have a note that sounds and the uh, the filter will come into effect as the note goes on and off, as per most stuff. But because we're blending it with the LFO with a very slow frequency, um, sorry, a, a very slow rate, you can see there the, the, the green and the, and the red light pulsing quite slowly, that will give us a sort of a, a background sweeping effect sound. Um, so less chat and more action so if i plug this back into the step sequencer now you should start to hear the notes so if i turn the turn the mix of the lfo down a second then what we're hearing now is just the envelope generator controlling the uh, the, the, the VCF. So uh, if I turn up the release, then you can hear it you know, a little bit like before. And now, if we, and then just to kind of illustrate, if I turn that all the way down, 
gets filtered well and truly but then if I change if I if we if we modulate the filter purely on the LFO there then we should be able to start hearing that pulse in and out So the nice thing about the mix is we can actually control two of these things. So we can decide what is the nice best sort of combination of the envelope generator and the LFO to give us that nice sort of sound that we're after. And that's it. Um, that is the sort of the core of it, really. Um, if we just turn that down a second. And that's basically how the uh, the multiplexer and the well, the buffer multiple rather, and the filter is uh, and the mixer is working. It's also showing you how the uh, the LFO has been used to give us some coloration to the filter. Um, that's not the only way of using these things, but that's just a a fairly typical example. So with that, I shall wrap up, and uh, next time we'll talk about the uh, step sequencer and the quantizer. They have the last two modules that we've uh, uh, that I'm going to cover. I'm not going to bother talking about the Vactral at the moment because that was sort of built um, as a temporary solution for the VCA, um, and it doesn't particularly work very well either. So never mind that. So yeah, I'll wrap up here, and then we'll talk about the step sequencer and the uh, and the quantizer next, and then that will be the. Uh, the full rundown build and um, hopefully I'll sort of string it all together, uh, get some triggers from a drum machine and sort of show you how it starts to hang together as, a, as an actual usable instrument.